Hello. To not ignore a big section of Doom, I'm going to go over the codex. And since they are not voiceovered, I'm going to be reading these for you so you don't have to squint your eyes and try to read the text. So uh, sit back and enjoy some lore. First, we'll start off with the UAC, a brief history. And this is decoded entry one of two that I've picked up. Despite the discovery of liquid water on Mars in the early 21st century, the colonization of Mars had little appeal beyond the exploration for the next century. With the discovery of the Argent Fracture, a transdimensional stream of re unrefined Argent Plasma in 2095, Settling and mining Mars became both practical and essential to meet the vast energy demands of Earth. However, the need for atmospheric conversion and terraforming of the Red Planet was a task that seemed insurmountable to all but one corporation, the UAC. Through their diligent dedication to technological advancement and forward thinking, an outpost was established in MTC 2096 to extract Argent Plasma from the Fracture. When this plasma is subjected to UAC's fermonic transference pattern, Argent energy is produced. This remarkable venture eventually bore fruit as Argent energy became the primary power source for all of Earth. New visitors to the UAC facility may take for granted the rich atmosphere while on the surface. But it should be remembered that just a few short decades ago, Mars was an inhospitable desert that could support no life. On authorized exploration into the exclusion zones outside the base is not allowed under any circumstances. Highly volatile experiments and artifacts are frequently researched a safe distance away from the base, and your safety in those areas cannot be guaranteed. Next, we have Resource Operations Decoded Entry 1 of 2. The Resource Operations Center, referred to as ResOps, was one of the first facilities constructed at the Mars base after the discovery of the Argent Fracture. It encompasses several key areas needed to run the facility, including plasma extraction and processing, isotope stabilization, heavy metal and ore mining, artifact analysis, communications networking, and off-world transportation. New UAC employees posted to the Mars facility are expected to fulfill a tour of duty in ResOps before moving on to their specialized career bracket. Security clearance level 1 allows access to all areas of ResOps, excluding the Vega networking hubs and some satellite control centers. For access to these locations, new advocates must submit a Delta Q Delta form to the departmental enforcer. And now we have the foundry, which is decoded entry two of two. Congratulations, new advocate. If you are reading this message, then you have been promoted to the foundry's resource team. If you are volunteered for the service, you are joining an elite band of Tier 1 advocates whose work and dedication keeps our mission running on all cylinders. As member of Foundry Resources, you will have access to the most advanced equipment UAC has to offer, including Gripton Cargo Handlers, Delta V Jump Boots, and Dinophasic Elevators. New members might want to consider applying for an exclusive Team Tattoo upon joining as a sign of faith in our science. Team tattoos are a mark of your tireless work at the UAC and can be requested by signing up for any of the Lazarus Wave case studies. Please contact a Tier 3 Advanced Weaponry Technician to fill in your application for a Pentagram brand today. Okay, so that was the environments in the Codex. Let's move on to the database. Let's see, first we have Field Drone, decoded entry one of one. 
Often referred to as droppers, these drones were developed by the UAC to autonomously receive and deliver ordered parts to engineers, off-duty employees, and soldiers. Argent Energy, decoded entry one of two. Early in the development of the Argent Accumulator, it was discovered that Argent Plasma compressed into Hayden Radius Spheres, named after Samuel Hayden, would retain its structure when charged with enough radioactive isotopes. Once formed, if the surface tension of the plasma sphere is broken, the energy cache contained within will quickly discharge, energizing anything it comes in contact with. Argent caches were the forerunner of the Argent accumulator, but their vulnerability to blunt force makes their use too unpredictable. There are still hundreds of these prototype Argent caches to be found around the Argent facility and have become somewhat of a collector's item among the UAC employees. Should you find an Argent cache, please report your finding to the departmental enforcer. Elite Guard, decoded entry one of two. The Elite Guard is a company of security personnel charged with protecting the Lazarus Project research and maintaining order throughout the Argent facility. Their distinct red uniforms help distill a calming influence among UAC employees, and they are known to be level-headed, disciplined, and fair but firm. Their suit contains cybernetic augmentations which give the elite guards an advantage should they need to quell any disturbances. The augmentations allow them to be faster, stronger, or more resilient to injury. Gore nests, decoded entry one of one. Studies of demons upon entering this dimension have showed that their conduct is not purely vindictive. There is a method behind their actions. When a demon captures their prey, the fresh kill is taken to a temporary ceremonial site where arcane rituals are performed on the pile of blood and gore. When enough corpses have been gathered, the ceremonial site becomes a gore nest. These sites, imbued with hell energy from rituals, act as an umbilical cord to hell. Extreme caution must be taken when approaching a gore nest. Attacking the nest, or indeed any demons within close proximity to the nest, will act as an alarm and siphon more demons from hell. And that's database entries for this episode. Next, UAC personnel. I have decoded entry one of three, Samuel Hayden. Samuel Hayden is the chairman of the UAC. Born into the wealthy and powerful Hayden family, he completed his master's in theoretical physics at Oxford University. He showed prodigious talents in several fields, including thermodynamics, electromagnetic theory, and nuclear science. At a young age, he established the Samuel Hayden Foundation, a philanthropic organization dedicated to sponsoring young scientific talent and funding scientific programs in schools and colleges. His daunting intellect made him a prime target for the UAC, and they recruited him soon after he was appointed general director of the Global Science Council. Samuel took over leadership of the UAC a few months after the discovery of the Argent Fracture and immediately put the Argent Tower into production. During construction of the Argent Tower, Samuel was diagnosed with stage 4 inoperable brain cancer. Samuel was given six months to live. He dedicated those last few months to finding a radical solution to his mortality. Cybernetic transference. Vega, decoded entry one of three. Running the Argent facility takes a lot of power. Not just electrical and mechanical power, but computational power. With so many interdependent systems feeding off a single power source, the UAC decided it would need to create a central mainframe computer to manage not only the flow of Argent energy, but the day-to-day -day operations of the facility with over 60,000 employees. This megacomputer, the brainchild of Samuel Hayden, head of UAC, would exceed the computational ability of any system before it, 
and more importantly, it would be recognized as the first truly autonomous artificial intelligence entity. They named it Vega. And that's UAC personnel. Let's move on to weapons. First, we got the chainsaw, decoded entry one of one. There have been reports of this item being seen at the Argent facility, though there are no known uses for it. Security personnel have been made aware that this item has likely been smuggled onto Mars and have been directed to confiscate it immediately, as there are no known practical uses for it. It must be assumed that this item should be considered a black market enthusiast's weapon. Heavy Assault Rifle Decoded Entry 1 of 3 Although recently superseded by the Plasma Rifle as UAC's standard issue weapon, the Heavy Assault Rifle is still in widespread use due to its dependable mechanical firing mechanism, high accuracy at long range, and abundant supply of ammunition. The weapon is effective at all engagement distances and is best used against a solitary target unless micro-missile modification is present. The standard issue ammunition is a 50 caliber full metal jacket round. I also have decoded entry 3 of 3, micro-missiles. A multi-chambered cylinder located under the primary barrel can be loaded with up to 6 HMX missiles. These small but deadly rockets were designed to deliver multiple payloads to a single target but can also be used to subdue multiple targets within a tight kill zone. The missiles will detonate shortly after making contact with any surface. Next we have the pistol. Decoded entry 1 of 1. Every UAC employee is provided a standard UAC Energy Matter Gel sidearm upon promotion to Tier 2 and above. This sidearm is reliable and effective at short range. A gravity gear dynamo in the stock recharges a capacitor whenever the operator moves. When the weapon is fired, the capacitor compresses up to 4 megawatts of Argent energy into a hardened plasma gel and launches the slug at high velocity. The gel slug has the same impact properties of conventional ammunition making the weapon act and feel like a standard ballistic firearm. The weapon is constructed of thermally diffusive metal alloys which allow it to discharge rapidly and repeatedly without overheating or compromising the accuracy. The capacitor in the EMG can also be upgraded to concentrate the energy into one large pulse for more stopping power. We have plasma rifle, one of three. The plasma rifle became standard issue among military units with the advent of Argent-powered electromagnetic accelerators. Based off the HIPGD design of the early 21st century, this weapon delivers a rapid salvo of plasmoids that inflict both impact and thermal damage to the target. Combat Shotgun 1 of 3 the UAC shotgun disperses a spread of high-velocity buckshot for maximum impact against the enemy, ideally suited for the operative who requires a speedy response for deadly close encounters. The wide coverage of this weapon loses impact at long range. The weapon is forged from a high-quality titanium steel alloy to ensure maximum reliability, repeat rate, and yield strength. Decoded Entry 2 of 3 Explosive Shot this shotgun ammunition incorporates a glycerin fuse that detonates an octanitrocubane gel upon impact. Embedded shot is dispersed at the point of impact, creating a wide area of effect. Highly effective against multiple targets or when detonated to the rear of enemies in defilade. Decoded entry 3 of 3, charged burst. An argent charged Compression Reloader allows the operator to automatically fire up to three rounds in rapid succession. With the enemy at close range, this action is devastating, taking down all but the most resilient of adversaries. The Compression Reloader requires several seconds to recompress after use. Next, Frag Grenade, decoded entry 1 of 1. The design of this weapon is conventional in nature, 
though it has been refined to perform at the limit of its ballistic capabilities. The UAC fragmentation grenade uses a Comp D explosive package encased in a steel alloy shell and has an effective fatality radius of about 5 meters. Improvements on the antiquated M67 grenade include a more reliable chemical fuse mechanism, interior machining of the casing to provide more efficient projectile dispersion, and a trigger switch safety clip to prevent unwanted activation. The newer Compti explosive also ensures the radio pressure wave has no drop spots, ensuring full damage potential within the fatality zone. So let's take a look at monsters. I got Hell Knight, decoded entry one of two. The Hell Knight is a towering brute bred for combat deep in the bowels of hell. These diabolical beasts are the prized gladiators of the Demon Horde. They relentlessly stomp towards their target, smashing their massive fists into the ground to create shockwaves that stagger their opponent and leave them vulnerable to bone-crushing melee attacks. The Hell Knight's powerful legs allow it to leap across large distances effortlessly, quickly closing the gap to its enemy. Imp Decoded Entry 1 of 2 These ferocious and agile demons are found all over Hell, and are often used on the front line in a concerted attack in either dimension. They revel in battle, feeding off their victims when the hunger takes them. Possessed Soldier, decoded entry one of one. While Lazarus wave exposure does effectively wipe any vestige of human behavior from most of its victims, some subjects continue to display technical cognizance posthumously as with possessed engineers, this does not appear to be random. If an individual has training in combat as part of the UAC military, the Lazarus Wave event will transform them into more than mere slaves. This anomaly further supports the theory that there is some form of genetic coding embedded within the Lazarus Wave particles which governs the outcome of Lazarus Wave exposure on a per-case basis. Possessed Decoded Entry 1 of 1 The possessed are created in a Lazarus Wave event a phenomenon first discovered by Dr. Olivia Pierce during her Lazarus project. While most victims exposed to Argent biowaves will expire without further effect, some subjects will absorb traces of Argent energy and enter a state of posthumous vigor. Despite necrosis of the internal organs, with the exception of the brain, the victim continues to animate and exhibit a low order of sentience for weeks or even months after clinical death. Posthumous brain activity in the possessed is limited to instinctive behavior. The possessed are known to be territorial when confronted by the living. When isolated, they will often enter a dormant state for extended periods of time. They will stand, unmoving, for days or weeks at a time until presented with a live food source or threatened by a predator. An interesting behavior has been seen when the possessed are held in a small group. They will drag human corpses into a central location within their holding pens and then perform a silent ritual around the pile of bodies. The resulting ceremonial site appears to be the initial stages of a gore nest. These actions must be driven by a telepathic communication with higher ranking demons as there is no local brain activity that could manage such choices. The possessed will perform these tasks even when limbs are removed or Pavlovian pain responders are implanted in their cortex, further cementing the theory that they are unwilling slaves performing an integral part of the life cycle of the demons. The possessed create the birthing ground for new demons, and upon expiration are themselves used as fertilizer for the gore nests. Possessed engineer decoded entry one of one. During a Lazarus wave event, victims undergo dramatic changes to their physiology both internally and externally. Aside from fundamentally changing the composition of their internal organs, the high-intensity plasma wave is strong enough to fuse metal to skin. 
In many cases, personal items such as watches and jewelry can burn through the skin and become permanently embedded in the victim. Perhaps the most unfortunate victims of this fusing event are any subjects that happen to be working with acetylene tanks or welding equipment as this equipment is often attached to the body to allow for mobile work in low-gravity environments, the Lazarus wave will create a demonized human with highly combustible explosive device embedded in its skin. As with all possessed creatures, they are mindless and driven through some form of telepathic communication from an unknown demon overseer. Additional care must be taken when confronting a possessed engineer. If the fuel tank is punctured and it doesn't explode, the weakened container can turn the possessed engineer into an explosive projectile. This is a danger to any being nearby, both human and demon. Hellraiser Decoded Entry 1 of 2 The Hellraiser is an astute and tactical foe that will engage enemies from a distance with a powerful beam of unrefined hell, hell energy. The beam emanates from an arm-like protrusion composed of cartilage and other osseous tissue. Articulation of the cartilage allows the hell razor to focus its energy beam into a single charge shot that will obliterate anything that stands in its path. Possess Security Decoded Entry 1 of 2 Possessed security units exhibit the most complex battle strategies of all possessed humans, including mobile shield advances towards the enemy and firing while in defilade. Possessed security will also drop their shields to adopt a more accurate firing stance at the cost of lowering their defense. Now we go on to artifacts. Deco uh, I got Berserk, decoded entry 1 of 1. Test subjects exposed to this sphere exhibit extreme rage and increased strength. It has been noted that subjects given the Berserk Sphere will vent their rage on any living creature they can find, and will even self-harm if they have no outlet for their fury. In the extremely rare case that a subject survives exposure, they will be left in per perpetual state of delirium and should be exterminated. <laughs> Do Marine, decoded entry 1 of 2. Additional relics were found in the tomb alongside the Doom Marine, some incantation tablets, and an ancient combat suit which was given the name the Praetor Suit. When found, it was encased in an inscribed stone tomb. The suit was extracted from the rock, cleaned, and subjected to numerous tolerance tests, and found to be almost impervious to any damage. It appeared to have some mechanical function as well, small receptors on the gloves and chest plate that attracted argent plasma and dissipated it through capillary tubes in the substructure. Markings on the armor were also consistent with images of a man or humanoid seen in several of the tablets and stones found on other expeditions. The same markings were also noted on the helix stone. Despite it being clear that the suit can be activated in some way, no method has been found to do it it appears to be missing a component, likely the Doom Marine himself. And that's it for episodes one, two, and three of Codex information that I found during my gameplay.